Kira, thank you for being with us today for this special event aimed at new partners in the UAE and the Gulf states, where you can find some of the region's finest hospitals. How has the COVID-19 pandemic changed the practice of modern healthcare? When we started before common, we believed that till 2030, more than 3.8 billion people will not have access to primary care. The outcomes should have been tremendous. The three to four hours people are waiting right now inside the emergency department would quickly become eight hours and more like we see today in China. So we started building a clinical triage system, as you mentioned, that would ask a set of clinical questions from the patient, help navigate them and take care of the first triage. All of this was based on 76 million medical records and 60 billion claim data. But then COVID happened and now people are more reluctant to actually visit their doctor. They're looking forward to fully digital healthcare. So we started enabling fully automated digital flows. I'll give you an example. While the patient is scheduling an appointment with a doctor, a system is asking sort of clinical questions. Does your arm are urinating? Do you have an abdominal pain? Behind the scene, it correlates this with these billions of claim data historically and reaches a probability high for urinary tract infection. The health system we work with decided that when diagnostic robotics says about 30% that the patient might have UTI, they should immediately go and do a urine test. Do the doctor and doctor sending them to a urine test. And this way we connect with different sensor systems. The sensor can be sent to your home. You can take a picture of the result. Based on the result itself, our system will change the probability for an tract infection to even 90%. The doctor would then get a red flag alerting them that there's a patient in need and they can prescribe them remotely. So we're describing here end-to-end -end flows automating some of the routine patient requests and only integrating real doctors when needed. And, and what will you say is, is the future of this kind of digital healthcare? Are, are, are doctors going to be enthusiastic about embracing it or are they going to see it as, as, as some kind of challenge? Today, less than 25% of the doctor time is patient-facing. Everything else is around documentation and routine work. We're only trying to automate that part of the work and leave more time to be human and take care of their patients. The next stages that I believe in, today when we talk about triage, we only talk about when the patient has a problem right now. I want to extend this to what we call proactive triaging. How can we look at the history of the patient for the last years and identify if they're deteriorating? We've been working for approximately 100,000 care managers in the United States through large health plans and building this type of automation for them. A primary care physician today is in charge for 2,000 patients, but it can even go to 5,000 patients. So people are just numbers for them. They cannot actually understand the full concept of what the patient is, their entire health situation. And this is where the automation comes in based on big data. We're trying to predict six months in advance which patients will deteriorate to ESRD, who will go to the emergency department, who's gonna do an inpatient visit that can still be prevented. We then build machine learning models that also try to match them to the correct intervention. Now this is a big deal. We're not gonna go to the phase where we're prescribing them drugs and telling them, you know, this patient needs chemo, this one needs something else. But we can tell them that if you involve a nurse and if you involve a telehealth psychologist at least once a week, in the past we saw large impact for this type of patients. So we're talking about the system that actually maps the patients, triages them to different uh, care management programs and making sure they will not deteriorate. So taking part of the management that the primary care physician is supposed to do and automated part of it based on protocols he believes in, but also automation based on data and best practices from other doctors as well. So that's all to do with treatment. Uh, how do you see the future of, of preventive medicine? Is that also uh, something that you're looking at? So everything I mentioned right now was around preventive medicine. In general, the concept of preventive medicine has been focused on just a couple of more tests. I want to extend this to much more. The concept of proactive is being able to ask questions from the patients all the time, monitor them, understand if they're gaining weight. For example, CHF patients, just the smallest gain weight means they're at risk of doing an inpatient visit. Knowing exactly their social situation, 
the social determinants uh, score, especially in the US around the health is about whether they have access to food, do they have people to help them? Because if they don't, supplying even the smallest help can make a huge difference for them. But over time, also doing this without bias. And one of the main papers around this was published in Science uh, last year, showing that a lot of those proactive or preventive medicine algorithms that are looking at the cost of the patients and based on them trying to predict who will be costly next year are actually biasing against race. And the main reason behind this is that specific people from certain race, especially Afro-Americans, were less treated historically. So they can have exactly the same medical situation as white people, but still get less treatment. And machine learning models that learn these patterns are gonna perpetuate them entirely for the future. So what we do, we apply state-of-the-art machine learning models to debias those type of predictions, making sure that we democratize healthcare in the right way. Now, the UAE, as we mentioned, has um, some of the leading hospitals and healthcare providers in the region. Uh, it's only been about a month now since all this news came about this uh, peace treaty, but uh, have you had any expressions of interest in your technology yet uh, from the UAE? We've been approached by uh, several different uh, health systems, uh, different business people to try to think together about how to engage and start deploying this in the UAE, but even uh, further east. Thank you very much, Kira Adinsky from Diagnostic Robotics.